Howdy folks, it's me Andrew and Mike in the man cave of madness. It is the middle of the afternoon and we are continuing our playthrough of Santiago campaign. Well, a little bit of play, uh, mostly how to, uh, how to play, learn the rules, discussion of some of the problems. So what we were going to do is do the Spanish turn <laughs> with the hope to try to retake Santiago. Now, uh, one of the things that I went back and read is like, well, when do you check supply? It's at the moment of each combat. So if you get cut out of supply in one combat, then say advancing could cut off, say a road or a railroad on which you would then some other units trade supplies. So the order you do your combats is quite important. Um, so for example, here, like this attack here takes Santiago. Uh, the supply would not be able to traceable here. So when they attacked the guy that was here, <laughs> so that that one the strength uh, engineering battalion there would have had a half strength. Now it says have round down. Oh, obviously, a zero strength doesn't make any sense at all on defense against shock because if you divide by zero, it's infinite. And again, that just doesn't make sense. Uh, so. I would say, you know, <laughs> retain the fraction, <laughs> right? So, like, if you've got, you know, I, I, if you add, if you're doing fire combat, you add up the strength points in total and have it. And obviously, a a half point's not going to make a difference on the chart over there, right? Um, so, if you have three and a half, that's not enough to get you to four. So that'd be down in the one to three column, you know. So, uh, but for the odds ratio, it, it just makes sense to. To, to keep the fraction, you know, and and so if you had a three strength shock value and you were halved to one and a half and they were attacking with six, it would now be a four to one. So be rounding down to one and having giving a six to one or something like that. So obviously, if you have a one halved down to a half, use the half. So I say don't round down, <laughs> retain the fraction. Um, makes more sense otherwise you end up having you could just say have round down minimum one okay which makes sense for the odds ratio calculation but uh i would easily say on fire combat that you know <laughs> I mean, one strength is usually not enough to do anything anyway unless you have some big bonuses but so back to here uh Another thing I read, we're going to try to retake San, uh, Santiago to see if you can. However, it don't matter. Uh, one of the rules says is if the Spanish lose Santiago, it will never act as a supply source again. So the Spanish are, excuse my French or my, my Spanish, screwed. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, they'll never be in supply ever again. Now, one of the things that they don't talk about is, you know, you can't reestablish a new supply source like off map and all that. Um yeah, I, I get it. If all their supplies were here locally, et cetera, and it's like, okay. But in terms of, like, you're supposed to retreat towards your supply source. Well, what do you do if you no longer have the supply source? It doesn't say, like, well, where would you retreat? So in that case, I would say uh, they should retreat towards, a, a, you know, for the Spanish, towards a map edge. You know, <laughs> if if you're if you're far distant from your supply source and you just cut off along the way, sure, it makes sense to try to retreat some way that you could towards your supply source. But if it's totally been eliminated, it doesn't address what to do then in terms of retreat purposes. So I could I could see saying, well, they're going to retreat towards Santiago anyway, because they know that's quote unquote, you know, home. <laughs> or I think if they're nearer to a map edge, just retreat towards a map edge. You know, that's that's friendly Spanish territory out there. So now, <laughs> one of the things that it says, <clears throat> more eh, errata that's, you know, a mistake that's not yet been identified as errata, is they say in the rule, they say the supply source for the Spanish is Santiago, and then they say hex 1208, which is here. Santiago is 1308, not 1208, 1308. So, typo, 1308 is Santiago, town, Santiago, Santiago de Cuba, right there, bingo. Okay, so, another mistake, <clears throat> Uh, so let's do this, folks. Let's go ahead and see what the Spanish could do. We've already moved over here 
these guys last turn to move up to slow down the Americans on their next move so they can't call a movement and double and all that stuff to, to keep them bottled up as good as they can. Um, we're going to see what we can do here in attacking and a half. <laughs> to, to, yeah, hey, let's see what happens, all right? So mm, this gentleman here is going to run in here this way. No zones of control, remember. This guy, uh, it would be two in the, the, the jungle. I think I called it forest last time. It's jungle, jungle. Um, so I can't get that far. I can't get into here. It's two, so he's going to move up the the along the railroad bed. He's obviously not using rail, but because there is no concept of using actual rail cars. And this would allow him to cross uh, the rivers. That's a one, two, three. He can actually get up to here this way. Oh, 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 oh. This guy here is going to go one, two, three. He's going to try to peel around. And all these redoubts here are really hurting the Spanish since they lost to begin that historical setup. Uh, vis a vis the Cuban setup allowed, it just doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, you really need some modified semi historical set up <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll talk about that more in the eventual after action review i'll do all right so we need to pig pile here now this guy here has only a two let's see can i I'm gonna get a little closer i think i can move this up zoom this in there you go now you can see those guys better we're, we we move these guys from down this way so now you can see it all here <sighs> machine gunner only moves two. These hills cost two. So they're not going to be able to get up there. Uh, let's see. They're, they're going to try to stay in Alcaney. Uh, uh, machine gun could try to come around and eventually get in there. But by itself, going to be shocked. Hard. I think he'll move down to here. All right. This guy here. We'll go one, two, three, move to there. Um, the leader can move four. He's going to move one, two, three, four down to here. Uh, I think this. He's going to try to form a sort of a solid ish line ish. Uh, he's going to move one, two. So if these guys try to attack here, well, they can't quite totally fill it up there. Not that they need to, but this does mean like these guys could come through here. But they're going to hold on to what they've got here, you know. Um. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> there's a Scario column off board over here. They don't come on yet. Um. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, I don't remember if I mentioned that last time or not. Uh, so, let me zoom out so you can see the rules better. So, there is no random events the first turn. The first turn, you skip totally the administrative phase. Now, normally, this is really weird. Uh, can you see that? There's a the second part of the administrator, there's a victory check, then there's yellow fever check, and then in italics it says roll for historical events 7.0 after yellow fever check. Why isn't that its own little section? Why isn't that 3.0? Okay, here it says you skip yellow fever check on turns one through four. Does that mean you also skip the historical events? Well, no, because there's a historical event that might delay the Escario column from turn four to turn five. But if you can't roll on turn one through four, or at least roll turns two through four, to get that, you can't, you know, you, you, you they would come in on turn four. And then on turn five, you might be able to start rolling, but that makes absolutely no sense. So, so because you skip the whole administrative phase on turn one, it makes sense not to do historic checks. But this role for historic events should not be under yellow fever check. It should be its own bullet point. You may skip yellow fever check turn one to four, but you don't want to skip on turns two, three, and four the historic events. Okay? That makes no sense. 
So obviously, again, another thing that was not play tested, going through the strict sequence of play, it is impossible to play the game as it seems to be intended, or as the errata indicates you should play, if you follow this sequence of play. It's just balloon. Okay. So I've said it. I've said it. I've ranted again. Now, I don't want to go too long here on this stuff. Some of you might be tired. Some of you enjoy the rants, but yeah, I don't, I don't want to be a Mr. Ranty guy. That's, that's not me. But I'm not afraid of voicing my opinion. And my opinion, it's an opinion, is that this game was highly underdeveloped, highly underplaytested. Certainly, the rules were not edited and proofread. And people did not, that did playtest it, did not playtest it to the rules as written. And that's why you always need fresh, fresh blood. So, so let's do this, folks. Um, so the Spanish will decide where they want to attack. <laughs> and... Uh, Let's see. <laughs> wow. Okay. So mm, the only thing that makes sense to me is all these guys are going to attack here. Period. That's it. Right. There's there's no way they can do anything against these flank guys being in redoubts. No. This this is just a show or combining bringing together. Eh, really, I probably should have put him in there. And not worry about. That's not even a thing. Yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna. Keep him where he was. Put all these here. All right. But we want him there in defense because they could technically gang up on him. Put the leader there with you. Also get a, a bonus on defense with the leader. All right. So these guys are shooting here. These guys get to shoot their defensive fire. So they got four factors there. Let me zoom in better. All right, so so two and two, four factors. All right. Uh, now, they have to decide. They can shoot a two and a two, or they can put four against one. Now, they get no... Now, on fire combat, uh, la, 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 you get a plus in the firing force. The leader does not help defensively when you're being shot against it's a, when, when you are firing you get a plus one you're, you know, you're directing fire better you're getting the guys to you know stand and shoot instead of like taking more cover or whatnot so uh so it doesn't matter but again the way that the, as written you know when firing against unit in redoubt and so shooting back against these guys even though they're gonna be charging across. Again, it doesn't make sense. You're you're shooting, shooting back and forth, but you're really shooting at them in most intensely when they're charging into shock combat, right? So it just doesn't really make any sense when you're doing defensive fire to let them have their terrain bonus. But that's the way it's written. So get rid of right now. We're absolutely playing it as written at the start, and then we <laughs> later we can retry it. So four factors. With minus two, the best you can roll is a four. No, no, no chance for an effect. <laughs> All right, uh, because of that silliness. All right, now so these guys do get their offensive uh, fire according to that errata. Um, so and it's going to be have though. So six and six is twelve, fourteen. Have is seven. Wow, they actually made it to that next column. Now, this only gets a one defensive bonus um, for the entrenchment. And again, it's not it's not facing over here, but it does not matter as as written. <laughs> so that's a big question. They very explicitly are having these things facing hex sides. And I, I would change the game to make it if any of the fire is coming through that hex side, you get the bonus. Otherwise, not. But right now, we're not doing that because it's all about the hex. So, so they're getting one for that. There is no benefit. There isn't shock. It mentions hill or town or hidden town or city. Um, yeah, there's no hill here or here. Right? Yeah, there's no hill. 
So shooting down from a hill gives you a bonus, but you know, there's no hill right next to it. So they have one, but he's got one. So it's net zero. So they're on the seven to ten column. So here we are. They, they have a 50-50 chance of getting a disorganized result, but can't cause an actual casualty. And again, there's no definition of disorganization really affecting the defender against the potential shock. It says the dis uh, units under dis marker may not attack or advance after combat during the shock phase. They can't attack. Doesn't say they can't defend. Doesn't say it affects the defender anyway. So again, as written, there, there should be some effect of the disorganized. If the attacker can actually shoot a fire result, get it disorganized, there should be some bonus. <laughs> so, somehow. One column shift or having the defender, or, or I don't know, <laughs> having one of the units in there, I don't know, something, something, something. Anyway, so it was 14 half to 7, minus 1, plus 1, it's even. Uh, let's see, can you actually see that? Roll, rolling a 5. You probably can't see that, but that's a 5. Um, so they would get a disruption. So we would put this on here. It's going to disappear soon, but... Um, well, let's see. Did it, did it, did it, when are all destroyed? So actually, <laughs> the technically, then the Americans and the Cubans is that right? Disorganizations for both sides are not removed until the end of turn administrative phase, which means the Spanish player who gets a diss on a guy, it's going to be removed right after their turn. So this kind of offensive fire getting a diss. Whereas the Cubans and the Americans, that diss supposedly stays with the Spanish player so that they could not attack in shot combat. Wow. That's, that's asymmetrically bad. <laughs> If the purpose of the disorganized is basically having defensive fire prevent that stack, a stack, because you can shoot at only one stack per unit, you can split up like there's two guys here, they can shoot at two different stacks this way. Um, but with the, the minus two, they have no chance of doing anything. Yep, yep. Another, another rule. <laughs> okay, we'll discuss that in the after action rule. How to redesign this game. How to develop it properly. You know, it's like, holy moly. So, so they actually got the disc, but now let's do the shock. So they're nine, right? The disc doesn't matter. 13, 16, 20, 27. Not bad, but 27 to nine would have been exactly a three to one, right? Nine, three to one, but they're out of the bligh, so they're halved, right? 13, 16, plus 11, 27, so it's 13 and a half against nine. So it's one to one odds, right? <laughs> one to one odds, adding one, subtracting one. Um, so we're looking over here. One to one odds is horrible. You can't do anything. And remember, there's no plus. Once again, it's only shifts. <laughs> um, uh, uh, um. So they get a shift to the left from the leader. They get a shift to the right because of the uh, town or entrenchments. Is if they're in. Jungle, hill, town, city, or entrenchment, or battery. A, a redoubt would be two. So, so these guys here on defense are better, but this guy's not in a redoubt. There's all these redoubts around, but not in this the city itself. So the attacker would call off their attack, right? There's no, there's no reason. They can't do anything. And remember, that is the option. You can always call off the attack, right? So it's like the shock is meaningless. And again, if... if that dis had an effect, 
Like, for example, let's say, well, if you counted them as zero, and that gave you unlimited you know, to zero, you know, divide by zero, and because there's no defending strength, and then they'd be on the five to one to column, and they could actually kill two or three steps and force and retreat. They would take it back, but that's not what it says. Um, so, moral of the story. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna call it quits there. I mean, we could, we can do the American turn. We could we could you know what what would the Cubans do at this point at the end of the turn? You'd remove this. You'd actually turn two. You wouldn't do a yellow fever. But well, let's roll a random event. Just, you know, we haven't really looked at that carefully. So you know, while we're here for for how to play educational purposes. Do, 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 where is the random event table? It's hiding from me. Trying to locate it. Where can I see? I'm making this up as I go, folks, because, you know, that's what I do. Um, whoa, wait a minute. Where is that random event? Ugh. So all the tables in this game, scroll out. All are in a box like this, right? So I'm looking for a box like this. They're all in a box like that. You see all these tables in a box. Well, now, the historic events table is not in the box. <laughs> Here, that's that non-box. <laughs> it's got a number, you know, it says roll. Well, obviously, you're rolling a die six, but it doesn't really say that. Per se, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six. But why the heck isn't that in a box like everything else? Blah. All right, so more more proof you're getting an editing issue with the rule book. It's a table. Like all the other tables, it should actually be in a table. All right, so we're going to roll. There's heroic Cubans, which would mean the Cubans get a bonus in shot combat, another odds bonus. Iscario delayed. If this happens, you know, whoa, the Iscarian call will come on turn five instead of four. Bad weather. Uh, off road and off railroad movement costs two per hex, and jungles cost three. El Moro and uh, Socapa released. That's the these guys here. These little weak one, two, three units that are here on the batteries that are protecting. They can actually start to move and, you know, not contribute anything, really. And the last thing is Spanish machine guns, which is this unit that they would get to come on. It actually comes on in or adjacent to uh, things. So let's see what happens. We're going to roll a die to see the historic event for El Mora and Socapa are released. So these guys are free to move and <laughs> try to help out. All right, so those are the, the possible random events there. The Escario delay doesn't do anything once it's already been rolled. Bad weather can happen any number of times. The, the Cuban um, heroics can happen any number of times. Uh, obviously, the releasing of El Moro and Socapa units only happen once, and the Spanish machine guns can only happen once. And you just ignore the roll. Uh, so, yeah, there was no roll for uh, Yellow Fever. Also, the victory check. Um, now, technically, right now, one, two, three, four, five. The Cubans hold five. Now, it says here, U.S. controlled objectives. It says... If the U.S. player controls, it doesn't say how they obtain control. Now, one would assume that you are the sole occupant of the hex or the last to have entered it. I don't think you have to keep a unit there. Maybe you do. But it does not say if the Cubans... It says the U.S. No, but it says the U.S. player. Uh, if the U.S. player controls. Now, does the Cubans occupy it do that? In one 
interpretation of the rule? Yes. Now, but they, they don't allow the Cubans and the U.S. to occupy the same hex. They don't allow them to attack together. Mm, the Cubans and the U.S. The Cubans can help the U.S. in their attempts to move through jungle and not get lost. Again, they can't be in the same hex together, but they can be adjacent. Uh, you know, certainly the Cubans could move out of a victory point hex to let the U.S. move in, but it does not say whether the U.S. Again, I showed the last time. There's all these U.S. flags on these control markers, um, and obviously, I, I'm going to say yeah, you know, they're not going to have to stay in the hex because they wouldn't need all these control markers if you had to stay there. The presence of the unit would show that. Uh, wow, they have way more units than they need, because I don't think there's that many. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, there are. Well, 13, yeah. There's quite a few of them. Um, so that's something that needs interpretation. Now, if, if we rolled, let's look at this Spanish surrender table. Okay, mm -mm -mm. try to zoom in there. Uh, I'm going to move this back. And I'm going to try to... No, this is going to be a, a difficulty here, folks. I'm going to have to not zoom in so much. There. So five objectives, you're rolling a six. You can add one if Elkany's under U.S. control. So that's that redoubt... Uh, city in the north, and if you've rolled previously the L ALJ, which stands for a las Garcias, which means to the riggings, which means uh, the fall of Santiago seems in it. Oh, it's well, past him in it. So this should trigger automatically if Santiago is lost. The Spanish naval artillery is withdrawn from play. Um, but not according to the rules. It's only on a die roll. But honestly, you know, it's plus one. If Santiago is controlled, it should automatically trigger this. Um, that's not, again, I would I would house rule that. But for right now, I'm not going to do that. But so basically, you'd be in the five. Goal. If the Cubans counted, you'd roll a die. That's a three. So nothing would happen. If they rolled a six, the Spanish Navy. Oh, we forgot about the Spanish Navy, didn't we? That Spanish Navy could have, would have, should have supported this. I need to go back and recalculate. I totally forgot about the Spanish Navy. Now, what's interesting is <laughs> if the Spanish Navy supports, and maybe they don't lose the square, the space, the hex, the the friendly casualty rule could come into effect. There's a one in six chance that they could lose that strength point, and uh, it could have been all over anyway. Uh, yeah, this was the unit that they had in there, so it could have been a seven instead of two. So the amount of strength that they had was what they'd lost one before it was nine fifteen and didn't they was it or was this the one that no these were here that was there they lost so five yeah they had 10 they had 20 so since I went <laughs> too long, I, my alarm went off and it knocked me off. I was trying to get finished before this, but of course, meandering Mike has to meander and ramble on about that stuff. So uh, <laughs> we were looking at the Navy and all that stuff. So obviously, uh, 7, uh, 20, uh, 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 right? 10, 20. Uh, they would not have had a 3 to 1. So actually, that navy is the saving grace for Santiago. Uh, that that the well, this, the Spanish would have probably like not attacked this guy here. 
this guy would have thrown in, they probably would have taken less here, but they would still do it. They'd still go for it because I think you can't get a five to one down a four to one, but you can still get a three to one. Right? So 10, and there was that guy died, 20, 26, 32. Um, that's four to one, so five to one. So so you could, the, the, the net was a three to one because there's one down. So so they'd have a five, six chance of taking Santiago. Uh, if you threw everything, everything at it, you threw all the units that are available to him based on your setup, 11 and 12 is 23, 33, 38, 43. That's enough for a 6 to 1, which would be a 5 to 1, 4 to 1. So you could still guarantee it. You could guarantee taking out Santiago Harbor, uh, or you could go for the, the lesser. You would lose one, the 3 to 1. Is that what that they had? I can't remember. Yeah, that one must have. Hmm. Because it's not two, it's only one shift. They definitely had a five to one. Down to a four to one. How did they take a loss? This was here attacking. Or did we have two here and one attack there and one attack this way? And that's where I don't remember. I have to go back and read it. Anyway, the deal is this has to be factored in. This guy. Can shoot support, um, during the shock, um, no, is it, is it on the defense? No, it's only on the offense. It's, it's in the offense when you're attacking. Never, never bring me mind. So they would be able to add five more shock here to this, uh, which they don't say whether sh the, the, the artillery, the, 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 in this case, the naval bombardment, is half or not. So that's something I have to look at. So some more uh, undeclared, ambiguous things in the rules, potentially there. Um, yeah, you will move our map. Let's just get that real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Of course, some of these things you think would be easier to find. For naval gun support. During shot camping, the blah, 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 blah during their own side's combat phase. So it's only an attack, it's not in defense. So it wouldn't have been up there for defense. So man, so yeah, Santiago under defended in the historical setting, given the way they allow the Cubans to sit up. So that's a whole question. So we're gonna call it quits here, folks. This was our, our play through this. I'm, I'm gonna play a little more. I'm gonna play out basically, you know, the Americans trying to advance what the Spanish can do. So even though they're out of supply over here and they can't make any, real progress against the Cubans to push them out of what they've already taken. Um, you know, maybe the, the Cubans, you know, might spread out a little more, you know, take a few more hexes. This guy might stay here and someone else might, you know, they might do a shuffle around kind of thing. Um, but, uh, you know, what what can the, the Cubans do to slow the Americans down here to, to you know, sort of, sort of avoid fighting maybe, but falling back slow enough to keep these guys slowed down so they can't call them movement and all that stuff. So, Mandarin Mike, Man Cave of Madness. This is Santiago Campaign 1898, Paper Wars number 102 from Compass Games. Uh, <laughs> I want to like this game, but until I <laughs> fix up the rules, <laughs> I'm not going to enjoy it. I'm just going to be annoyed. Okay, so take care, everyone. Enjoy your games in whichever way you can whether you have to rewrite the rules yourself or not. Take care and ciao.